Half a day students, I am Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. You all have been through a year of big changes. We've had to adapt and make big changes to keep our families and our island safe. But with change comes opportunity and a chance to try new things like PBS University. While Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenori and I will continue to do our part to keep our island safe, you students have a part to play as well. Your part is to keep learning and to keep up with your lessons. That's why I am happy to see you here ready to learn with PBS University. PBS University is a way to bring a continuous educational curriculum to you while you stay safe at home during this time. To help you keep up with your studies, we asked our friends at PBS Guam and the Guam Department of Education to put together this episode. Thank you for doing your part and have a great lesson. PBS University is a program by PBS Guam and the Guam Department of Education in conjunction with public school teachers. These lessons are created to provide both parents and students with a unique educational experience while helping students to continue learning at home. PBS University, next on PBS Guam. One, two, three, four. Come along, let's sing a song. We'll have a great adventure. Today's the day. Let's learn and play, we'll have a great adventure. Numbers, letters, science things, all that we can do. Help you deal with how you feel, share with us too. It's super cool and just like school for yeah. our awesome learning adventures. So grab a friend, the fun will end our awesome learning adventures. Awesome learning adventures with PBS University. Hello, or Maori, like they say in Kiribati, I'm Mr. Gomez, your third to fifth grade ELA teacher, and today I'm going to teach you something. Boy, I don't know about you, but for me, this has been one long hiring week. You know, with teaching and coaching, church, projects, and just life, it's been one really exhausting week. But you know what? Today is Friday, you know what that means? It's the weekend! <laughs> I'm excited because I have a wonderful weekend planned. Hey, I know what? Why don't I take you along with me for the fun? Maybe, just maybe, you'll see a few familiar faces. Speaking of fun, I wanted to talk to you about a word or words I've been saying in almost every other sentence. And that's nothing other than interjections. <laughs> that's right, folks. Interjections. One of the eight parts of speech you will be learning. Interjections are words or phrases that are used to show feeling or strong emotion. We may use interjections whenever we are mad, like or sad, like Aww. or hmm, dissatisfied, like I a day. Whew. Look at the time. It is getting late. I have a big plan. I'll be taking you with me to my weekend vlog and I'll be seeing you in a few seconds. All right, so I totally forgot to record my morning of coming here and I actually just finished having lunch with a couple of my friends, um, including Miss Pama. And so here we are shopping along, trying to find some stuff. All right, so I'm here with Miss Pama and Miss Escobar. Just, uh, I'm just shopping over here at GPO. We decided to go to Famous Footwear to check out some shoes. Wow! 
Look at this. It's on sale for $99. Oh, those are pretty good. Right? All right, so we just bought some shoes. Um, Miss Palma, where do you want to go now? Look, it's seventy percent off. Wow! Let's go. Goodness, I am so done with shopping. All right, I'm done shopping, Miss Palma and some friends. I'm going to call it a day, and I have a lot of people to see over the weekend. Here we are uh, with Mr. Shippy here and myself, Mr. Gomez, um, just cruising around Agania and looking at different places here. Hey, did you see the garden over there? The garden? Yeah. Oh, that's the garden. I look right now. Oh, oh my gosh, are you okay, sir? I almost died. You see that? <laughs> Careful. Oi, do not touch the displays. The sign say it. Don't touch the displays. <laughs> Ciao. I really like this area, like just walking around, especially after you eat in one of these beautiful restaurants. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Woo. Gotta work off that uh, that belly, you know? <laughs> Get bigger and bigger. Oh man. Also why I breathe so heavy. <laughs> <sighs> I haven't been here yet since uh I we flip all these. Yeah. I drove by once. Uh, I was like Dang, look at that! Woo, that looks good! But I didn't <laughs> stop yet. It's just a drive-by. Oh yeah. It's a drive-by day! Woo! Oh my goodness, all those interjections, sir. All of them. Oh, isn't that a cute turtle? Cute turtle. <laughs> Ooh, look at that whale over there. What? A whale? <laughs> Whoa, is that a, is that the mango? Is that a little mango over there? Mmm, delicious! Like, that's so cool because it's not even mango season right now. Like, mango season has come and gone already. Wow, a mango over here at Skinner's Plaza in Agania. Nice! All right, so the last clip, I actually lost batteries, but here I am on my Sunday early morning at the beautiful Pacific Islands Club in Tumon. And here I'm going to be meeting with uh, Ms. Borja and a couple of other teachers. All right, I'm really excited because I will be doing archery for the very first time. Woo! So this is Rachel. She taught me how to shoot archery in just a couple of minutes and she did pretty well. Especially by how you can tell with my shots. Okay, so I am shooting archery for the very first time. Pull back. Nice. I will probably go kayaking as well. Yes! Alright, so Ms. Borja got on the kayak way before me and yo Ms. Borja, how's how's it feel? This is fun! Oh yeah! <laughs> So after that fiasco of kayaks, I decided to relax and then try some slides. Going down now. Woo! So after the slides, Mr. Borja invited me to do a tug of war and see exactly who wins. <laughs> After winning, he wanted a rematch, so I gave it to him. Oh no! I hope you had as much fun as I did. 
Remember, interjections, words that you say with feeling or strong emotion. But before I go, I just want to remind you to love yourself because you deserve it and love your neighbors because they need it. Have a good day. Adios. Hello and welcome back to PBS University. I'm Ms. Palma, your third, fourth, and fifth grade math teacher. Today's global greeting is Maori. Maori means hello in Kiribati. I am so glad you're back again. You helped me so many times before. Now I know I can count on you to help me again. I need your help going grocery shopping today. I am on a budget, so I need to look for items on my grocery list that cost less. I am comfortable with working with whole numbers, but decimal numbers, I'm still a little bit confused. So will you help me? Great! Before we look at the prices, let's learn a little bit about decimals. A decimal is simply a number that is divided into parts. But wait, isn't that the same for fractions? Well, fractions and decimals are very closely related. One of the differences is when we talk about decimals, we talk about dividing the number into powers of 10. We divide into 10 equal parts, or 100 equal parts, or even 1,000 equal parts. The word decimal really means based on 10 from the Latin word decima, which means the 10th part. Let me help you understand this a little bit better. Let's use this square to represent one whole. If we divide the square into 10 equal parts, each part is called a tenth. If we have five of these tenths, if you remember our fraction lesson, we have five out of 10 or five tenths. To write this as a decimal, we write 0 0.5. The place value to the right of the decimal is called the tenths place. Now let's divide our whole again into 100 equal parts. Each part is called a hundredth and is represented by these little squares. If we have five of these hundredths as a fraction, it is five over 100. And as a decimal, we put five in the hundredths place. This is our place value chart. Anything to the left of this decimal point are the whole number values. And anything to the right are the decimal or fraction parts. The easier way to understand decimals is by using money. Here's a dime. The value of one dime is 10 cents because we need 10 dimes to make a dollar. The dime represents the tenths place value. If I have just one dime, I write one in the tenths place. I add a zero in the ones place because I have no whole dollars. Another way of writing 10 cents is 0 0.10. So if I have three dimes, I have three tenths. And if I have six dimes, I have six tenths. Now we'll use pennies to represent the hundreds place. One penny has a value of one cent because we need a hundred pennies to make a dollar. So if I have one penny, I have one hundredths. Add zero in the tenths and ones place to show that the number one is in the hundredths place. Another way of writing one cent is 0 0.01. If I have three pennies, I have three hundredths. And if I have four pennies, I have four hundredths. Comparing decimals is similar to comparing whole numbers in that when we start comparing, we compare the greatest value first. Let's bring back our place value chart. When we begin comparing our decimals, we look at the numbers towards the left. If the greatest digit is in the hundreds place, we will compare the numbers in the hundreds place first. If they are the same, then we move on to the digits in the tenths place. We continue to compare the numbers going down the place values until we come across digits that are different. Let's go over some examples. 
Let's compare the numbers 245 and 345. The greatest place value is in the hundreds place. Which number is greater, 2 or 3? Great! 3 is greater, so that means 345 is greater than 245. Now let's compare two decimal numbers, 10 and 9 tenths and 10 and 25 hundredths. Let's start off in the tenths place. Since 1 and 1 are the same, we'll move on to the ones place. 0 and 0 are the same. Now let's move on to the tenths place. 9 and 2 are different, so now let's compare. Which number is greater, 9 or 2? Great! 9 is greater, so that means 10 and 9 tenths is greater than 10 and 25 hundredths. Now let's take a look at our grocery list. We need milk, cereal, juice, and bread. I found two cartons of milk. This milk costs $3.89 and this one costs $4. Remember, I'm on a budget, so I need to find out which price is less. That's right! $3.89 is less than $4 because if I look at the ones place, $3 is less than $4. let us put this milk in our cart. Now let's look for some cereal. I found two boxes of cereal. One box costs $5.89 and the other costs $5.80. Which box of cereal costs less? That's right, $5.80. I'll put this box of cereal in my cart. Now time to get some juice. The juice on the left is $1.40 and the juice on the right is $1.04. Which is cheaper? That's right, dollar and four cents is cheaper than a dollar forty. Let's put this juice in the cart. And now the last item on our grocery list, a loaf of bread. The bread on the left costs three seventy nine and the bread on the right costs four seventy nine. Which bread costs less? That's right, three seventy nine costs less than four seventy nine. Let's put this in our cart. That's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for helping me with my groceries. Remember, when comparing decimals, work your way from left to right. Compare the greatest place value first. If they're the same, move to the right. Compare that and keep comparing until you find something different. Thanks again and hope to see you guys next week. Bye! Don't forget to smile! Half a day and Maori. That's our global greeting this week, and that's how they say hi in Kiribati. I'm Mrs. Borja, your third through fifth grade science teacher here at PBS University. I'm here to teach you science things. I'd like to talk more about the five senses and how and why people and animals use them. I know that we can talk about the five senses here, but the best place to talk about the five senses is outside. You know, fresh air and sunshine and lots of things to experience. So let's go for a walk out in Haganya and learn more about the five senses. Come on, let's go! The senses is the process that our bodies use to gather information in order to experience and learn things. And today is a lovely day to take a walk and use our senses to experience Hagatnya. This is the Angel Santos Laddie Stone Park. The five senses include taste, smell, hearing, touch, and sight.
there are some really cool things to see here. Wow, how lucky are we to live on such a beautiful island where we can walk around and feel the sun and breeze and hear the birds in the trees all year long. With our eyes, we can read the history of the park and explanation of what laddie stones are, and then of course see what they really looked like. Look at all these laddie stones. Reading about these laddie stones and looking at them really gives me an idea about what it was kind of like to live in the time of the ancient Chamoru. Come on, let's keep walking and see what else we can find. Mmm, can you smell the flowers? And there are so many amazing murals all around the village to see. You know, animals use their senses to experience the world and process information too, just like us. For example, animals can use their senses and feel if it's too hot or stormy to be out, smell and taste if something is rotten or good to eat, hear if there is anything dangerous around like cars or ferocious animals and see where they're going or where to find food. Just like us, animals and humans use our senses to take in and process or understand information. All these bits of information are kind of like puzzle pieces, and that information, those little puzzle pieces, are sent to our brains. Then our brains put all the pieces together, what we hear, see, smell, touch, and taste to form a big picture. As we walk around some more, we come to Serena Park. Remember the legend of Serena? Well, this park is in honor of the legend, and we can use our eyes to see this super cool statue of Serena. and this beautiful bridge, because there used to be water here. Maybe she swam right here long, long ago. This is the San Antonio Bridge, and it was built in the year 1800. I'm touching a bridge that's over 200 years old. The next time I read or hear the legend of Serena again, this memory of seeing this bridge and statue and the smell of the salty ocean nearby is gonna help me experience the story in a different way. So remember, the senses is the process that people and animals use to gather information in order to experience and learn things. And the five senses are taste, smell, hearing, touch, and sight. I loved using all my senses on our walk today, but if I had to choose a favorite, I think my favorite sense is my sense of sight, especially on a walk like this. I can see the children playing in the park, the birds flying, the leaves and the trees blowing in the wind, and all the beautiful colors around. Well, 
Thanks for joining me on my walk today. I hope you learned more about the five senses and how we can use them to take in information about the world around us. Come back next time for more Science Things with me, Mrs. Borja, here at PBS University. As always, be good, read books. Bye. Hafe day students, welcome to PBS University. My name is John Fernandez, and I'm the superintendent of the Guam Department of Education. These PBS University lessons are made to help you to continue learning. The teachers here prepared fun lessons on science, character education, math, English, and more, and they made it for you, the students of Guam. We're very grateful to them for their instruction. We're also thankful for you students, parents, and guardians who are watching. Remember, stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you soon in the next school year. Thank you. Maori boys and girls, and welcome back to PBS University. My name is Mrs. Christine Palma, your third, fourth, and fifth grade social studies teacher. Maori actually means hello in Kiribati. Can you say Kiribati? Very good. Kiribati is actually located in the central part of the Pacific Ocean, which is between the North Pacific Ocean and South Pacific Ocean. And it consists of 33 islands, and only 20 of them have people living in it. The rest of the islands are sadly almost underwater. Would you like to go on another adventure with me? Great! Since we are talking about the islands of Kiribati, let's try to find it on the globe. You know, the 3D model of the Earth. Aha! Here is the globe. Now, let's try to look for the islands of Kiribati. Well, it's a lot of tiny words here that I'm getting a little confused. We will help you! Wow! Can you really help me find it? I, I, I keep turning the thing and... Yes, you can find its absolute location um, using coordinates. I'm a little confused. What are coordinates? It's basically a set of numbers or even letters that can help you find a specific place or object. Let us show you. Here is a coordinate grid. There are lines going up and down and lines going across the page. Do you see where the star is? Well, let's find the line it sits on going up and down. What number is that? Four! Now let's look at the line that's going across. That line that the star sits on is number five. Perfect! So, its absolute location is 4, 5. The first number is a line that goes up and down. And the second number is a line that goes across. Let's try another one. What object is on 3, 7? A pizza! Very good! One more! What is on 1, 6? A ball! You get it now. Very good. Well, that was easy, but what does it have to do with finding Kiribati? Oh, yes. Repeat after us. Latitude, longitude. Great. On a globe or a map, you will see lines going across it and lines going up and down. The lines going across it are called latitude. And the lines going up and down are called longitude lines. Oh my goodness, I am so confused. There's latitude, longitude. How do I know which is what? Okay, okay. Here's one way to remember it. Lines of latitude have some flatitude. <laughs> latitude, flatitude, attitude. Get it? Attitude, flatitude, uh, never mind. How about latitude? Think of a ladder going up. Latitude, latitude. <laughs> wow, those are actually great tips. So, if the lines going across are latitude, then the ones going up and down are called 
longitude, like my longitude hair. Get it? <laughs> no. Well, at least I remembered it. That counts for something, doesn't it? And that's really all that matters. Exactly! Now here's the tricky part. The point of location is measured in degrees. The equator is considered a latitude line. And the equator's number is zero degrees latitude. Zero? Yes, zero. Using the grid, every line going up towards the North Pole are increments of 10. So it reads 10 degrees north, 20 degrees north, 30 degrees north, and so forth. Now, the opposite side, which is the bottom half of the equator, is the same exact increment but towards the South Pole. This reads 10 degrees south, 20 degrees south, 30 degrees south, and so forth. Do you follow? Yes, I understand that. Great! So now you can infer that there are more lines in between 0 and 10, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 90. Do you know how to count up to 90? I hope so. Well, so what about the longitude lines? Well, there is something called the Prime Meridian. Is that an Autobot? Um, no. Oh. It is an official imaginary line that runs from the North Pole to the South Pole and runs through the city of Greenwich, England. This Prime Meridian is zero degrees longitude. It's like they chose some random place on the globe. <laughs> anyway, the Prime Meridian separates the Eastern Hemisphere from the Western Hemisphere. So, halfway around the world is 180 degrees longitude. This imaginary line is called the International Dateline. Wow! So, does that mean we can find Kiribati? Um, according to my research, Kiribati is 3.304 degrees south and 168.7340 degrees west. Let's see. Oh, there it is! Right there! Aha! We found it! Wow! That was so easy! Thank you so much for helping me, you guys! Let's do another place. Where would you kids like to go? Did I hear Disneyland? Well, let's look it up. Let's find the coordinates to Tokyo Disney. Did you find it yet? Did you say 35.6329 degrees north and 139.8804 degrees east? Wow, you're so fast. Well guys, now that we know the absolute location, I will meet you there. Thank you so much and I hope you had a lot of fun learning about coordinates so you can use them to your advantage when you are trying to find the absolute location of a place. Just remember that lines of latitude and longitude are imaginary lines. And my friends were just so helpful, weren't they? Well, where are they? Was I imagining them too? Hmm, that's interesting. Well, I guess I will see you at our next episode. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day, Smarty Pants. Goodbye! Oh, of a day. Or as they say in Kiribati, Maori. Welcome to another awesome learning adventure here at PBS University. I'm Mr. B, your third, fourth, and fifth grade character education teacher. So I was just working on this to-do list here, and actually, this is part of what our lesson is about. Today's lesson is all about organization. Now, being organized takes planning, creativity, and effort. And sure, sometimes we just wanna leave that to other people. But if you really wanna get stuff done, you've gotta make a plan and get organized. Let me help you. I like to break up organization into three main areas. Thoughts, space, and time. Now the first area 
is organizing thoughts. Now, being organized starts in your head, and the best way to organize your thoughts is to get them out of your head and into writing. And there's so many ways to organize our thoughts in writing. Think about when you're learning something new in school. I'm sure you've used different graphic organizers. Yeah, those word or mind maps, tables and charts, or even just simple outlines. How many of you write in a journal or in a diary? Now these are just some of the different tools we can use to organize our thoughts in writing. And we'll come back when we have some more time and we'll do some lessons on how to properly use these tools. The point today though, is to get the thoughts and ideas out of your head and into writing. How about the second area of organization? That's organizing space. This is probably what most people think of when they think of organization. So the simplest advice that I can give is to follow the idea of a place for everything and everything in its place. A well-organized space you know, it makes it so much easier to find the things you need so that you can do the things that you need to do. Now, a great example of this would be a grocery store. Yeah, they keep all the things that are similar together and then they'll number and label the aisles so that customers can find all the things they need super easy. Well, how about an example of a place that you think you could improve organization? You know, a place that I'm always thinking of is my kids' bedroom. I'm always telling them, please clean and organize your rooms. I mean, they have bookshelves and toy bins and dressers and closets for their clothes. I mean, you know, their rooms are they're always messy. Well, not always, but I mean, they have that first part, a place for everything. Now I just wish that they could just put everything in its place. But, you know, like I said, being organized, it takes time and effort. So let's, let's start with something small. How about um, your school bag or your school desk? You know, almost all school bags come with built-in organization. Yeah, like there's this, um, they have all these different pockets where you can keep smaller items like pencils and crayons. And then there's bigger pockets where you can keep books. And you could even get more organized by using a pencil case or a pouch or notebooks and folders that have pockets in them. Yeah, more pockets in the folders. And for your desk, maybe you keep different notebooks and folders for each subject. And since you've got that nice pencil case or pouch, it's already in your bag, you don't need to keep it in your desk. Oh, speaking of things that you don't need to keep in your desk, trash. Yeah, lots of students, they like to keep trash in their desks for some reason. You know, try this out if you're one of those students. Before you go out for morning recess, throw away any trash. You can do the same thing before lunch and before you go home each day. Now, at the end of the week, do a good clean out of your desk. Take home any return work. Throw away that trash and just make sure that you only leave what's needed to be left in your desk. Keep this schedule and you'll have a nicely organized desk and a happy teacher. All right, that leads me into the third area of organization, organizing time. You know, this is so important. And just like organizing thoughts and space, there are tools you can use to help organize your time. Now, many of you out there have tablets or smartphones. Did you know that there are planners and calendars built into those things to help you organize your time? Oh yeah. Those things aren't just for video games or phone calls. But you know what? Aside from technology, there's nothing like the tried and true method of making a to-do list. Yeah, like what I was working on earlier. You know what? I've been talking a bunch. How about I sing it to you? 
check this out. Get stuff done, you gotta make a plan. We wait until last minute, just stay cool, man. We make a list of all the things you gotta do. We check them off one by one until you're through. Scheduling your tasks can be done easily. Write them down and put them up where you can see. Make sure there's time to get everything done before the moon comes out and replaces the sun, yeah. The task at hand is my one request We concentrate on giving it your very best We don't multitask, you will find It's better to do things one at a time Scheduling your task can be done easily Write them down and put them up where you can see Make sure there's time to get everything done Before the moon comes out and replaces the sun Cause scheduling your task can be done easily Write them down and put them up where you can see Make sure there's time to get everything done Before the moon comes out and replaces the sun, yeah Alright, I really hope that I've given you some ideas on how you can organize your thoughts, space, and time. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. But please come back again for more awesome learning adventures with me, Mr. B, here at PBS University. Take care. My PBS friends and aloha. Aloha. Aloha also means hello or half a day in Hawaiian. Aloha. Guahusi, Sinora, Bobby, and welcome to Cha 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 Tamaru Time. Do I have an awesome, awesome lesson for you today? Do you like to mix ingredients like I do? All right, sit back and get ready to see all the different ingredients that I'm gonna mix with my coconut. That's right, my coconut. All right, guys, get ready. All right, my friends. So the ingredients we are going to be mixing today has one very important ingredient that we use with our coconut. It's called our Letsin Nizuk. That's right, our coconut milk that we are going to create with our Kumsan Nizuk. Yeah, that's right. Are you ready? And we are going to make tatizas. That's right. Flour tatizas, by the way, or tatizas arena. Can you say tutizas arena? Malik, 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 is your mouth watering too? Yeah, that's right. How many of you make tutizas or tortillas at your islands or wherever you're at? Oh man, you do. And how many of you like it with flour? I love flour tortillas. That's right. And I love to put lecinizuk or coconut milk in mine. That's right. Do you do the same thing we do? <laughs> oh, wow, great. Your tatizas must taste really, really mungy. That's right. So here is our lesson for today with our tatizas arena. That's right. So one of the first words I'm going to teach you today, of course, is our kumsan nizuk. We learned this in the previous lesson by grating our coconut and making it so that it's fine enough for us to make our letsin nizuk. Can you say kumsan nizuk? <gasps> Maulik. And in order for us to make our letsin nizuk, we need to make sure we squeeze or fugu. Can you say fugu? Malik, 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 malik. 
Another ingredient that we are definitely going to use when we make our tatizas is our azuket. That's right, we used azuket when we made our candid nizuk or bukadu. Can you say azuket again? <laughs> wow, you guys are awesome. I love it. I love it. All right. Now, arena is very, very important. Arena is our flower. Can you say arena? That's right. Our flower is going to be mixed in to one of the ingredients to make our tatizas. That's right. And I bet you cannot wait to taste this really deliciousness that is gonna come out of all the ingredients that we mix. Another ingredient that we love to use is our mantequiza. That's right. I love mantequiza. Do you love mantequiza or butter? That's right. Can you say mantequiza? Wow, maulik, maulik, maulik. All right. And of course, our coconut milk or our letzen nizuk. Can you say again, letzen nizuk? <laughs> malik, 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 awesome. All right, let's go. So we're gonna take all our ingredients, including our letzen nizuk or our coconut milk, and we are gonna mix up an awesome, awesome, awesome dough for us to put on our own pan and cook it so that everybody can see how we're going to make our tatizas. All right, guys, are you ready to see the process? Are you ready to try this too? Yeah, me too, I am so, so ready. All right, let's do this then. All right, friends, let's go ahead and take our kanza nizuk and fugu it to get our letzen nizuk. That's right, you can do it many times as you need to get all that coconut milk out. First step is we're going to get our arena or our flour and pour it into a nice big mixing bowl. Second step is we're going to get our mantequiza. That's right, I love mantequiza. Third step is our baking powder that's right we're going to use our baking powder and we're going to spread it evenly throughout our arena that's right and our next one our fourth step is guess what it is our asuket you are correct that's right and we're going to mix all of this in together and get our mantequiza mixed into our arena and our asuket and the baking powder just keep mixing until you get that nice, soft texture. Lastly, number five, is our letzen nizuk or coconut milk to finish mixing our dough. Just add a little bit, and once you are ready to really, really fully mix it, you put a little bit more, and we're gonna start to make it into a dough just like this. Great job. All right, next. Let's go ahead and roll some of our tatizas out. Go ahead and use a roller if you need one. You can make any shape or size. Don't forget, you have to poke holes into our tatizas so that it will evenly cook through. And here's our tatizas in the making. All right, my PBS friends. Thank you for joining me for making my tatizas. Wow, PBS. All right, my PBS friends. Did you enjoy making tatizas with me? <laughs> Great, let's review all the words that we just learned today. Of course, one of the words we learned was comes and nizuk. <laughs> That's right, great job trying to say it. The other words we learned was letzen nizuk. <laughs> great. And the last couple of words we learned was arena. Good. And asuket. And mantequiza. Maulik. And our fugu. That's right. Most important is our fugu to squeeze our coconut. All right. That's enough 
lesson for us for today. Go and cook your tatitas. And thank you again for joining me for ta 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 tomorrow time. Adios. Fast, fun facts. Fast, fun facts. With Mr. Ernest Pochoco. Everybody, these are my feathers, my wings, because I'm a bird. <laughs> Hi, this is Mr. Ernest Ochoco whoop, with another fast fun fact. And we are going to do a diversity word, which is eborn. And that is Tagalog for bird. Cool. And we're going to talk about two birds today two magical, mystical birds. The first bird we're going to talk about is called the Ibung Adarna. And the Ibung Adarna has some powers. One of them is very, very cool that I really like. And the other one is a little bit gross. <laughs> it's a little gross, so gross. <laughs> let me tell you about the first power. The Ibung Adarna has beautiful singing bell, a beautiful singing boy. And it will sing like songs, and the songs can make you go to sleep. And it can also heal your wounds, like, ouch, ouch. And then the wounds are gone, gone. Yeah, it just goes away, right? So the Ibung Adarna has that as its one of its fabulous superpowers. The other superpower is after you fall asleep, after it sings like seven songs. I don't know why seven is the magic number, but it is. After you, it sings seven songs, then you will go to sleep. And please do not do that because if it poops on you, you heard me right. If it poops on you, <laughs> Then you turn into stone. Ah! Like that. <laughs> and then you'll need some mystical water to be poured over you. So the Ibu Nadarna has kind of like powers like Medusa. Like, ah! Ah, that's her. And she's going to like, her eyes are going to glow. Oh! And it's going to turn you into stone. Ah! It happened again. I turn into stone. <laughs> Those are two of the powers of the Ibung Adarna. And the second bird that we're going to talk about is one of my favorite birds. It's also featured, the name of this bird is featured in the comic books, the X-Men. It is the Phoenix. Yes, the Phoenix bird. It is also the mascot of one of our schools here on Guam, Father Duane's Memorial School. I went to that school for a little while, so I'm part Phoenix. Yeah, that's right. So mascot. Now, the Phoenix has different powers in the comic books. It has cosmic power. And the Phoenix is actually a representation of all life in the universe. All life that has been in the past, all life that is presently existing, and all life that will be in the future. So the Phoenix is that life force that is everything in the universe. Kind of cool, right? And the bird itself also has powers. You probably have seen this bird in like Harry Potter. And the Phoenix bird has a power that's really cool. It dies and then from the ashes, it is reborn. So that's why the Phoenix in the comic books is kind of like the representation of life and death. So those are two of my favorite mystical birds, the Ibung Adana and the Phoenix. That's your fast fun fact with me, Mr. Ernest Ochoco. Always love who you are because you are unique. All right, everyone. Bye. Half a day students, I'm Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. For more than a year now, you all have continued to wash your hands and watch your distance from others. And you've done a really great job wearing your masks. 
We know your parents and guardians have helped you to make these changes to keep yourself and your community safe. As Governor Leon Guerrero said, we are happy you are here. We want you to continue to learn and sharpen your skills with the help of PBS University. This program is the result of a collaborative effort. We couldn't do it alone. I'd like to thank the teachers and support staff of the Guam Department of Education and PBS Guam for their work and their commitment to our students. I'd also like to thank you students for participating at home. To your parents, I'd like to thank you for taking an active role in your child's education. We are all eager to return to a time when all of us can share and study together in person. Until then, we hope you learned something new from this PBS University instruction.